everybody. I am Quickshot, and it is my honor to be speaking to Fabian Sheepy Malant from the Unicorns of Love. Uh, Sheepy, congratulations on making it to the best of. I do want to dive straight into it because we don't have much time. Unicorns of Love, for the fourth time, are one best of five away from making it to the group stage at the World Championship. Why will this time be different, and why will you win today? So first up, we don't have to face an LEC team. So <laughs> we play against Supermassive. Second, we're very confident this year. Um, I think everybody in this team is willing to show what they can do. And I think there's no doubt that from our side, going into the Supermassive series, we're going to win. So yeah, I think it's just really good confidence. And I think overall, this team has just been working so hard. And I think it just, it, it will carry us through like what we build together as a team. Let's talk a little bit specifically about the matchup. I know coming into the play-in stage, Frost had a conversation with you and talked a lot about how the family, the camaraderie, the essence of Unicorns of Love is something that you took to the LCL. This is the most dominant LCL team that has ever existed, only dropping two games this entire year. But what was very interesting to me in my prep was that the LCL and the TCL have never met in the playing stage, have never competed. So this is going to be history in the making. Either region will be the first time qualifying out of play-ins into groups. What is it you're looking for to take down and focus on in terms of Supermassive coming into the best of series? First up, I didn't know that fact. That's really, really cool. Um, I think our, our preparation is not so much different because against Supermassive, we have been scrimming actually quite a lot um, over, over the split. And like you said, we were very dominant in the LCL overall. I think that this roster is probably the most talented roster that Russia has ever sent over to, to the world stage and or in the play-ins. Um, so, yeah, I think nothing much changed for us. We have really good uh, champion pools. I think our champions match up really well against the ones from Supermassive. And I think Supermassive is like a uh, straightforward team, how they want to play. I don't want to set the expectations too high yeah. in case we're losing. But I think I missed that point already. I, th I think so too. And I appreciate the confidence. I respect it. If you don't come in with a mindset to win, I think you're doomed to fail. Um, Sheepy, just one last thing. As of course, you're appearing on the English broadcast for the World Championship. You're representing the LCL. And the long history that you and I and you and the organization have with Europe. What message do you have to fans and viewers watching from home before we get into game? Uh, first up, uh, we had such an overwhelming support from everybody. Um, I know that a lot of people from Europe see, uh, see us as their team as well, um, because I mean, we went to LCL as well because of reasons that happened. And I'm just so happy, like especially all the Russian fans as well have been so vocal on, on VK, which is like the other Twitter that exists in the world uh, for Russian people. And yeah, I just want to th say thank you, and especially for our Russian guys. I think Russia overall... Um, at least my players were very shy in the beginning and they had to open up a lot. And now that all the fan support is given, um, they become way more, I don't know, just whole as a person. And, yeah, Sheepy, thanks for everybody I'm, for cheering us on. I'm very excited to watch the games. It is an absolute pleasure to speak to you. And with a little bit of personal bias, hopefully I'll speak to you again in the group stage. Best of luck in the series. And let's carry on with the show. Absolutely loved that interview. Thank you, Quickshot. Thank you, Sheepy. And welcome back to the State Farm Analyst Desk. Now, I want to start by saying I have two weaknesses. It's sometimes being too vague and some other stuff. Um, but it is a familiar territory for Sheepy. Once again, he finds himself just one series away from the world's group stage. Dracos, thank you for joining me. I haven't really seen you all week. Yeah, I know. It's good to see you, Alex. It's yeah. been a long time. I'm digging the neck. You were doing that casting vibe. thing. Yeah. yeah, that was cool. It was a little, it was hard to not let the depression show through there in game five. I watched Mad slow bleed out yeah. but now potentially get to watch UOL beat Supermassive or maybe more likely in my opinion Supermassive take it over UOL. Oh interesting let's start with those TCL champions Supermassive who are coming off of a win against the Mad Lions from yesterday which is of course where Dracos's tears were shed. TCL are perennial wild card, wild card favorites they probably have wild cards though as well. It was through clean play though and not cheese so I think that was, was something we were thinking about you know Supermassive having to cheese their way mm -hmm. but not a cheddar in sight. 
Yeah, I think they're just up for Mad Lions in general as a team. I think their read on the meta is so good. They weren't going for these crazy picks like Mad Lions was breaching out to. And I think for me, the MVPs of Supermassive so far are the top jungle and Snowflower in the support with the engages. So I'm excited to see how they adapt. I think Kakao and Lilia has been a standout for me. So I'm expecting that to be taken away. Is this um, the best chance, Dracos, for, for the CIS region to, to step into that group stage of the Worlds? I mean, I think it is a very solid chance. I think stylistically, there's two very different teams that are setting foot in front of us. Supermassive, I think, lines up a lot more with what European fans probably look at as yeah. good League of Legends. It's much cleaner, it's much easier to understand, whereas CIS is a little bit more crazy and yeah. wacky, but this certainly is a good opportunity. The question is, how ready are the TCL representatives to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the crazier things that Unicorns of Love are going to bring to the table? Yeah, and it's all going to come from the bot lane. I think Gadget's the main flexibility that you are have with the Swain, the Galio, the, all these Heimdinger Ziggs, all these bot lane picks like AP champions. I think uh, Supermassive needs to play standard and they need to make sure that they don't get like sucked into yeah. the the madness that is your And I've learned a couple of things over these th these few days and Ananasic, A, how to pronounce his name and B, very flamboyant and exciting jungling presence, Dracos. Yeah, we spent entire plans trying to pronounce his name, so no hard feelings if people continue to mess it up. But yeah, Ananasic has been a guy that has come out consistently on the playing stage and made a name for himself. Now, it was surprising to me when Cheapy called out and said, hey, this guy's a rookie, he had some nerves, because it never felt like this guy had nerve issues on stage. But the fact that he is improving is a big deal because he is going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kakao, and Kakao historically is one one of the great Korean jungle legends. Yeah, and I think the interesting thing about this matchup is they both share almost the exact same champion pool. They both like Graves Nidalee, they both like Hecarim. The only sort of curveballs there is is like, an Anasik might pull out a Skarner or something like this, or a little bit of an Evelyn. So Yeah, we saw from, how well that went. Yeah, it didn't go so well. But apart from that, there's a lot of overlap here, and I think that it's interesting to see an Anasik bringing his aggression against Kakao's aggression from what we saw yesterday. So they might meet in the river a bit, and they might fight a lot. So I'm excited to see how that one goes. Set the scene for us, Drake, because it's closing thoughts already, I'm afraid. I mean, I think the biggest deal for me is jungle match matchup as well, but also top lane matchup. Armut has not really been contested in that matchup outside of his match with Impact. If Boss can step up today and make that an even matchup, that is a big strength taken away from the TCL, and they're going to be the ones who have to figure out how to adapt. Yeah, and armut has been popping off all throughout the planes and yesterday, so yeah. Okay. To... Eyes on Armut. He had, really yeah. has been impressing. A lot of people on the community side are, are suggesting he might be someone that might get that export ticket to a bigger <laughs> league. Who will secure the last spot in group? Supermassive or Unicorns of Love? We find out after the break.
and welcome to the Caster Desk for the final series of World's Planes. Unicorns of Love up against Supermassive. I am Medic, this is Endo, and we are here to bring you what is hopefully an incredibly close best of five. Yeah, I mean, I think from what we've seen from these two teams, these two teams are very exciting. They like to get scrappy, they like to fight you, and they're pretty stacked with talent. Like, yeah. these are some legitimate teams here that both would stand a good shot in the group stage. And I think, like, I looked across every single role and I was talking to you as like, oh, usually we have these featured matchups. You can talk about everyone here, like, Boss <laughs> into Armored, Anana Sick into Kakao. Like, every single lane as you go down it could be a pivotal point for both these teams. Yeah, and I mean, I think everyone has to be talking about the top lane right yeah. now. Like, Armut in particular completely took over his Shen, his Wukong. He was dominating in the regular games. And, uh, I mean, I, yesterday, too, against the Mad Lines, was looking very, very strong. So this will be a bit of a challenge here for Boss. But Boss, no challenge to, to popping off in the top lane either. Does like to play a lot of those carry-style champions. But matched up against Armut, this is a matchup that could have a really big impact in the rest of the series. It definitely could. We have seen Armut pop off a lot of times throughout the course of the last few days. And I'm looking forward to seeing if it happens once again here. Do you want to just remind people of exactly where these teams are coming from and how successful they've been on the international stage? Unicorns of Love from the Commonwealth of Independent States. In 2015, when they were playing in the EUOCS, they were one series away from making it to Worlds. In 2016, when they were playing in the EUOCS, they were one series away, in fact, one game away from making it to Worlds. In 2019, when they were playing for the CIS, they were one game against Splice away from making it into Medic, Worlds. Medic, I'm noticing a bit of a trend here. In 2020, what's about to happen? Well, we'll see because they were one game, one tiebreaker game in Planes Ooh. Groups away from making it straight to World's Group Stage. And now it is all on the line for them once again. If they had won that tiebreaker, they would have made it straight into the group stage. Instead, PSG have taken that spot. Yeah, and I definitely remember uh, last year, I actually I was casting the match that they almost made it to the group stage, went all five games up against Splice. This time, they don't have to worry about the Mad Lines. We almost had the faded rematch between the two squads. But here up against Supermassive, this gives them a good shot to move forward. And of course, it's been a long time since we've seen a Turkish representative make it to the group stage as well. It was all the way back in 2017 with the fabled 1907 Fenerbahce, who went 0-6 in their group, but did manage to make it to the world stage. And now we'll see if Supermassive can perform on the international stage once again. These two regions have never met since uh, in Worlds. Never yes. met in Worlds, that's what I was going to say. They did used to compete in the international wildcard tournaments, but those were not Worlds. And now, since planes have been introduced in 2017, we have never seen CIS versus TCL. And also, it's the first time we've see not seen either of them have to go through a major region or a top four region to make it into the world stage. Exactly, and this makes this a, a really hype matchup because when you look at you know a lot of the teams that usually get seeded straight into playoffs from these regions, you would usually look at the you know Unicorns of Love as being one of the teams that return uh, the, the CIS, the TCL. Like These regions are always the ones that you see performing very well in the play-in stage. So we get to see who is the better of the two here today. I think, uh, you know, we talk a lot about these teams and their two play styles. One thing that, uh, or one way I like to describe the way these two teams like to play is the, unic the Unicorns of Love, they're the team that favors quantity over quality. They're going to throw fights at you all the time. And yeah. sometimes they don't work out, but a lot of the times they catch you off guard and they're going to be able to punish you. But I know if you guys watched Supermassive yesterday, the quality of their fights is absolutely sick. They're using the Fog of War so well, setting up traps against the Mad Lions, and that worked very much to their advantage. So I think this game we're going to see a lot of bloodshed and a bit of war over Vision as well. And Supermassive have also had those few extra games to really get acclimatized to the world stage. You said, like, they played up against Mad Lions yesterday that was a five-game thriller. Overall, Supermassive have played nine games on the stage. Unicorns so far only played five. And we see the uh, the knockout stage bracket there, as we said, Matt, Supermassive beating Mad Lions yesterday. Now we'll see which of these two teams can really take the, the ball by the horns, take this game by the scruff of the neck and try and explode onto the group stage. Yeah, because you could say, you know, five extra games on stage obviously benefit. You get more practice. You could also say it can get a little bit exhausting. Yeah. So a full five game set, you know that takes a lot out of players. Unicorns of Love, they got to watch, get some extra footage on this team too to come in and prep for this matchup. And it's less than 24 hours later as well. It's not 
not even like you have a couple of days to recuperate, to recharge. You are playing less than a day after you finished your last match, and you are playing against a team that really showed us quite a lot in the group stage, right? Unicorns of Love, they almost topped that group, and that's a group with like LGD in it. It's the group with the surprise that was PSG. They are an incredibly strong team when all of the cogs align in their team compositions. Yeah, and I think there, if there's any team in planes that's going to make full use out of getting extra footage on their opponents, it is going to be the Unicorns of Love with Ananasic in the jungle. We know he likes to go for very creative jungle paths sometimes, and I think getting a good read on how Kakao wants to play out the early game is going to be pivotal for them, because Kakao looked really Really, really good so far this tournament. He definitely has, but Ananasek is going to try and answer him on the other side of the rift. Unicorn's got side selection. They selected blue. Blue sitting at about a 66% win rate across the course of Worlds. In fact, both of these teams have only won one game on the red side apiece. So no real surprises. The blue side is the priority, and we'll see Azir removed by the Unicorns of Love. Yeah, Azir seems to be a pretty consistent ban thrown the way of Bolulu here. Not too surprising to see that, to see that one go down. Of course, because this is a Unicorns game, we have to remind you all that this team doesn't play by the rules. They don't adhere to any meta. Gadget is living in 2018, still playing Mage in the bot lane, which I personally love. The likes of the Orianna and the Swain, which give this team so much versatility in the draft phase. You know what I love about it? It's kind of that historical throwback to Genja as well. Like, the guy who would do anything in That's the bottom way, lane. way, back. I mean, yeah, but it's like classic, right? And he was on the Unicorns of Love as well. So it's just great to see this sort of inventiveness continuing with this squad, with Sheepy still at the helm, of course. Hecarim removed by the Unicorns of love the on taken away we've seen how powerful that can be but it's a bit surprising to see it banned on the blue side well now i'm like where's the shen popping up because obviously hecarim's banned but we've got three top lane bands as well with the and the camille and the orn and everyone knows how insane Armut Shen has been at this tournament. Definitely has had some pop-off performances, but Ananasek is going to go for the Nidalee, try to super clear through the jungle. That's also going to be a pretty decent matchup into the Lilia and try to dissuade Kakao for going for that pick himself. Yeah, both the junglers have played Nidalee and Lilia, uh, sorry, Nidalee across the course of the tournament. Lilia would be Kakao's go-to if you just lock on who's he got the most games on, but I'm very surprised to see a misfortune locked in so early here. Going to team it up with the Lilia. Yeah, this is the misfortune Lilia combination. So obviously Nidalee, she can go for like Mikhail's and you know help out uh, against the Lilia sleep a lot later on to the game. But misfortune, her ult is persistent damage. That's damage over time. It doesn't break up the sleep yeah. and you can sleep multiple targets. This isn't like the Zoe interaction where you one shot one player who can't move. This is a situation where you could line it up on two or three members and absolutely tear through the enemy team. We'll remind you of that in the game because I had a long discussion about it yesterday. It seems odd that MS F ult does not break asleep. <laughs> like, you've got seven waves of bullets firing at your face. You're like, nah, mate, I'm having a nap. Thank you very much. Yeah, if any of you guys, you know, armchair analysts out there want to do some quick research, go on the LOL wiki, look up persistent damage and how that interacts with sleep. But again, we will get into that later on. The Wukong now comes through as a bit of a steal away from Armut. This is another champion that he likes to play in the top side of the map. And I think this is almost just inviting a Shen pick at this point because Armut likes that matchup. Yeah, I mean, Armut's played Shen three times across the course of the tournament. So far, won twice incredibly strong. We saw how good he can be when he gets ahead. Actually, the Twitch being locked in here for the Unicorns. We've seen Gadget on it once before, but I'm wondering perhaps if there's a little bit of inventiveness. Maybe Twitch yeah. Wukong in the bottom lane? See, I, I would be very surprised to see that come through with the Senna, but you never know with Gadget and Santos. I will I will wait till everything is locked in until that comes through. I do love seeing this Malphite come out from Armut. He, of course, played that yesterday for a win up against the Mad Lions, and this champion is how you beat Twitch. Twitch can do absolutely nothing against the Malphite in the top lane. Malphite also has a pretty solid matchup up against the Wukong. Wukong can't really do a whole lot there. And against a poke champion in Nidalee, you want hard engage, so this champ does it all for Supermassive. Yeah, Supermassive have this beautiful wombo combo already, right? Like, if I was looking at this composition, I said you could put anything else into it, I'd be like, okay, Leona and Oriana. Oriana's obviously <laughs> banned away, but chuck a Leona in there, add in, you know, some extra damage for your mid laner, and you will absolutely shred through your opponents. The Unicorns of Love, though, they have have this composition that's a little bit mobile, can be very uh, flexible in getting into lanes and trying to catch some picks, and there is the Leona ban from them, so they are fearful of the power of the sun. Yeah, I wonder if Supermassive want to ban out another mid laner or just hit the Rakan, the Rakan Twitch combo that we do see uh, to be very, very powerful already so far at this tournament and would make up for a bit of the engage that Unicorns is lacking. Not that they're lacking a ton, but Wukong would love to have someone else he can pair up with when you go for those dives in. But I will point out the Silas yeah. ult to deny an MF or especially that Malphite ult is going to be valuable too. 
I quite like the Silas band there. I'm wondering what else you could see from the U Unicorns here. Uh, Cassiopeia has been played by No Man's as well. Syndra, of course, still on the cards. So you have some strong mid laners, but uh, definitely falling down that pool just a little bit. With the set removed, super massive here, you expect they would go for their support and give their mid lane a counter pick last. Yeah, I do wonder if we're going to end up seeing something like the Corky, uh, you know, the. Silas, of course, can have a pretty decent matchup into that and would give that consistent DPS for Supermassive as well some magic damage if they wanted to go that route. But again, I think we are going to see that support come in. And because they did not ban the Rakan, I really like this move to steal it away. And again, it's playing in to the big old team fight. Supermassive, their team that love to group up as five and fight you together, playing out of the Fog of War with this long range initiation to catch you by surprise. And this composition does exactly that. Definitely does. I'm wondering now for Unicorns where they go. Like, Nautilus is a, a relatively good pick into the Rakan. You can lock him up and also gives you that ult for the MF if she's ever ulting at the back of a fight. But Alistair does similar things. Bit of disruption, can knock away the Rakan if he's trying to get in for the engage, but doesn't have the extra range that you would get from a Nautilus. It is just a bit unfortunate because there's not a great solve into the problem that is this Malphite now. You're going to have to really rely on No Man's in the mid lane if you're going to try and kill them. I mean, they might just try to forget that, but I feel like taking double poke champions against a Malphite, against a Rakan, is going way too hard in that one direction. And okay. obviously when the enemy team can just hard engage on you, you're not going to necessarily Really be able to make full advantage out of these poke options. But if you can get a lead here as the unicorns, that poke can be devastating, right? Because sure. if, if you're getting poked out a couple, with a couple of paddle stars and you're down to half HP, it then becomes very difficult for you to go for that hard engage, go for that all in. I was wondering, is it time for the Bo Lulu Lulu? It may just be the Galio <laughs> <He's gone> instead <laughs> for the ultimate survivability here and the speed up for the Lily. But I do like this Galio pick a whole lot more. I. I gotta tell you, Medic, I am loving what I'm seeing out of Supermassive. You know, uh, a top lane looks like a pretty solid matchup for them. Bot side too with the MF and the Rakan. Like, I think this draft all around is just very, very solid. And up against a team that wants to take things a little bit slowly before popping out of stealth with you on that Twitch, I just don't know if there's a great answer into this Malphite. Totally agree with you there, and I think you see both teams defined, their styles defined by this draft. You have much more sort of team fight orientated, easier picks, a lot more potential from Supermassive when it comes to these coordinated fights around Vision and Unicorns. It's a little bit eclectic, it's a little bit of a hodgepodge. You're picking from a few different baskets, the poke, the camouflage, you're trying to get into these fights, trying to make as many fights happen as you can, but Supermassive will try and keep Unicorns at arm's length. And if they manage to do that, their composition just seems so much more powerful. Yeah, and I think when we get into this game, the two things I want to focus on, first of all, uh, just a shout out to Armut's Malphite in the top side, because that's obviously going to be beastly, but don't expect too much to happen up top side. Instead, I would rather look at Ananasik in the jungle on this Nidalee, because I think if anything is going to look good for the side of the Unicorns of Love in this early game, it is going to be that Nidalee, potentially the shenanigans they can get up to in the first few levels. We are about ready get to get on into the game. Unicorns of Love and Supermassive fighting for a spot in the group stage. It has been four years since the Commonwealth of Independent States was represented at Worlds Groups. It has been three years since the TCL was represented at Worlds Groups. Both these teams have the chance to not have to go through a top four region, to not have to go through NA, through uh, EU, through China, through Korea. You have your best opportunity probably ever to make it to groups. And if you fail here, well, that's the end of the road and you must go through the other. It's You escape the top four, but these two teams both look very strong in their own right. So many talented players across these rosters, some standout performances already at Worlds, and two teams ready to prove themselves in the group stage. And it makes groups so exciting as well, because um, there was a lot of discussion in the group draw, and we're not going to dive all the way into it because it does get a little bit complicated, but because a European seed has not gone through, because Mad Lions hasn't got into groups, the seeding into groups becomes a lot more wide open. Like Team Liquid don't automatically have to go into Group A anymore. You don't see Mad Lions automatically growing into a Group D, I think it was, yeah. uh, anymore. So you have a little bit more flexibility. We're going to see a little bit more surprises when we get towards those selections later on. And then I just want the action to start, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> like, I understand why we need this break. You've got a ready check, you've got to make sure everything's good for the players. They have to go through their uh, pre-game rituals, but 
I have been promised a lot of action. I have been promised intense games. I have been promised fight after fight after fight, and I am looking forward to it. Let's get onto the rift for the last series of Worlds play-ins. You know, I didn't realize that was there for the entirety of the year. So the FPX logo, logo is in top lane on Summoner's Rift. How can you miss it? Was, it? It's a giant glowing I'd cup. I never go top. I'm a support main. <laughs> I'm always in the bot lane. I'm not See, Mark. That's your mistake, though, because we have Mark, Snowflyer, Santos. These guys are going to be roaming up top side. You don't have a guy like Armut in the game without seeing some attention thrown up towards that top lane. Real quick, I do want to look at this top lane because this is an arcane comet on the Malphite, which likely means he's going to be rocking the uh, Mana Flow Band, too, uh, inside of the Sorcery Tree, which does give him a little bit more poke options. And I think uh, this matchup, really good for Malphite early on. Wukong doesn't have a lot of su great sustain options early in the laning phase. And as I say that, we are seeing some level one madness already. So uh, the Wu Ma Malphite matchup into Wukong, we'll leave it at it's good for the time being. <laughs> Though four members of Supermassive were stacking on the red buff. We saw some of these uh, like Nidalee invades into the, uh, the Lily and vice versa in our series earlier on today. And I like the idea of moving Snowflower over there in case there was going to be a late level one invade from the Unicorns. It's interesting to see No Man's go for the unsealed spellbook on the Zoe here in the mid lane as well. Not going for the electric for the extra burst. Instead, wants the summoner spell cooldown and the ability to flick through those depending on what the lane state is. Yeah, and I do like that because, of course, when you pop summoner spells, even, even your normal ones that you don't pick up off the ground, you get the bonus move speed and the damage uh, from your W as well. So being able to slide into those is going to be very nice. Let's talk a little bit about those junglers, though, because I know you wanted to focus on Ananasic. I will highlight the fact that the Unicorns of Love were able to get a ward on Kakao's blue buff yes. so that they know he is not there right now. Yeah, uh, and uh, right now, with, with the amount of time it's taken for him to get down bot side, you can... Uh, assume that he did start and fully clear away his top side camps because we have seen a lot of Lilia just going like Raptors into blue buff to prevent some sort of buff to buff start uh, from the Nidalee on the opposite side. So I think Ananasek is just going to be matching uh, the jungle clear for the time being. And while you're saying our move could potentially harass with some of the rune options you see at the bottom of your screen now, early on with the jungler pathing down bot side, he's going to be a little bit more cautious. And I think because Lilia has been able to avoid Nidalee in the early game, and because these lanes from Unicorns don't really want to go invade past level one, uh, it's going to be a little bit more quiet than we were maybe expecting. Those are the cursed words, Ender. It's not what I want to hear, but... I mean, if we look at Lilia, she's going to be eeping all the time, so it won't necessarily be quiet. That. Watch out for that. She does eep a lot. She's going to take away uh, the uh, blue and the grump at the same time. We'll have a look at where we are in terms of CS. Armut is actually slightly behind in the top lane. Boss just got himself a recall as he's pushed the wave into Armut's tower. Means that he won't have to burn the teleport. And has gone towards that no magic mantle. Makes a huge amount of sense. The Arcane Comet, the Seismic Shard spam. I did see Armut had double adaptive as well in yep. his uh, little rune choices. So just getting yourself a bit of extra resistance to mitigate some of that Malphite damage early. Yeah, and I'm sure that, that Boss is probably going uh, double MR runes too. Uh, not just because of the matchup and mitigating the poke, but you're looking at double Double AP in top lane and in jungle. And you're actually looking at triple AP if you widen your horizon to the mid lane with Galio, who you know is likely going to be looking to roam around because Galio works so well with a couple of the champions Supermassive have drafted in the side lanes. He can pair up nicely with the Malphite, who wants to put himself straight into the fight, and that Rakan too. So level six is definitely when playmaking geek becomes unlocked for the side of Supermassive, whereas Unicorns of Love, I think, maybe just want to chill a little bit more and play off of cooldowns like the bubble. This is interesting. Ananasic just made it foray in towards that top side jungle, and you can see Balulu teleporting back into the lane. I was wondering if the Nidalee would aim a spear at the head of the chicken, but for the moment, uh, the chicken is left alive. Right now, Ananasic, he, he's playing off the timers of these camps respawning, because if you look at it, Kakao already took a reset, so he has a Fiendish Codex. That's not ideal. His mid laner, uh, No Man's, is also trying to reset. I feel like Ananasic has stuck around on the map too long, but he may make it work on Balulu. Sleep lands onto Balulu. He's going to land the taunt as well, and Justice punch his way to safety. It's a pretty easy escape for him, but he is losing some time in the mid lane, and you can see just slightly behind on CS after having to teleport back into that lane earlier on. I just feel like with the amount of time Ananasic has spent on the map, now he has to go down to his bot side camps and clear those away. But again, still hasn't taken his reset, so you can see Kakao has gotten a decent EXP advantage over Ananasic, and Ananasic still has to take a reset, so Kakao's gonna have all those camps coming up and is going to win the race level six. It's one of those interesting ones where 
you look at it and you say, oh, Ananasic still relatively good clear on the Nidalee, uh, still has the Hunter's Talisman, so we'll get all of the XP that he needs out of these camps, but being able to get to these camp respawns with that next part of an item, you know, get towards yeah. your, your Skirmisher's Saber, your Stalker's Blade, or even grabbing a Fiendish Codex, just makes the clear that much quicker for you. Yeah, and, and it's even about just refreshing the cooldowns on your camp so that they can actually level up and you can get the bonus experience per level, because still, we're five and a half minutes in, Anasik is in the bot side, potentially waiting if there was going to be a gank opportunity, but will now be taking his first reset at the same time that Kakao is going to be taking his. It's about a nine CS differential. So that's two camps or thereabouts. Yeah. In it's the literally just right? the top side camps. And, yep. and you say, oh, but an honest side, can you just go top side and clear this way? And yes, that is true, but you realize Kakao's top side camps are going to be respawning in about 30 seconds from now, and that'll gonna, that's going to be absolutely no problem for him. He even has a little bit of extra time if you wanted to look for a play around mid, mid side, which you can see Snowflower is also pathing towards. The uh, level four. Uh, reset into mid for supports is synonymous with high level League of Legends these days and that's exactly what Snowflower is doing. He'll probably just path down here. He's got double control wards so you can place a control ward in the pixel bush if you want to protect your mid laner a little bit or even if you wanted to give that Galio a little bit more comfort roaming around, right? Because if yeah. you control ward here, Galio now knows he is safe to stand in that bush and look for the hero's entrance down towards the bottom lane. Medic, you know what's even better than, you know, vision? Gold. Gold yes. experience. Get a scuttle crab. And what's that? It also gives you vision. Oh, so much Beautiful. bang for your buck right there. Is now Santis is making a bit of a foray towards mid lane, but I, I do like how Balulu has been playing around mid side. He has fallen a bit behind in CS, but has not fallen prey to any ganks. Nanus is going to miss the spear here. Kakao knows that his jungle is uh, not his own anymore. Four players there. Santa's going to step forward. Here's the hero's entrance. The Drowsy's going out. There's the sleep. Zoe looking for the damage. Paddlestar can't quite connect. A stun onto Balulu as he tries to get away. He's burnt the flash and will escape underneath his tower. But Unicorns of Love able to get a couple of summoners there and the red buff away. Remember what I was saying that Unicorns of Love, they're all about the quantity of fights they can throw your way. Well, that's a seven minute invade on the top side, bringing Santa's all the way up there so they could steal away the red buff. And the Raptor camp. Really nice move there from the Unicorns and Ananasic to call that one coming through. But now Gadget has to be really careful underneath this tower. You can see he's just popping his uh, stealth here and uh, should be able to pop that cannon minion now that Santos has made his way towards the bot side. Yeah, so what we see is essentially a red buff and two flashes taken away from Supermassive to a place in the bottom lane yeah. for the Unicorns, of, uh, for Supermassive themselves, right? So how much can you use that plate to take the game away from this bot lane? We'll have to see, because already with the uh, BF sword completed yep. for this uh, misfortune, we talked about some of the insane synergy she can have uh, with her ultimate not breaking the sleep of Kakao, the wombo combo there from Zytnaut. He is the main damage source for the Supermassive team, and there's not a lot of tanky members on Unicorns. He's going to shred through them. It's going to be incredibly explosive at team fights when we get to them. But remember, the MF was first pick for Supermassive on that red side, right? They put a lot of priority onto this. So if it doesn't work out for them, you have to wonder if you go back to draft and change things up. Yeah, I mean, when, when I look at it, usually you would say, oh, first pick misfortune, how does it get punished yeah. in draft? And I don't really see the punish. Like, yeah, you have the dive opportunities of, you know, of course, the Wukong and, and Zoe can potentially find try to poke her out with range later on. but. Here we go, mid lane, no man's. Flash in from Snowflower. No man's still had a flash of his own. Snowflower was looking for the Battle Dancer Grand Entrance combination that you can do on the Rakan, but wasn't yet six, so didn't have the quickness to back it up as well. No man's gonna <laughs> jump forward, steals away the flash. That's a wall, Just buddy. Is punched straight into the wall. Balulu uh, practicing his headbutts. Yeah, I like it though. Make sure you can get the flash out of that one. Balulu tries to find the play there. And it was a slick little gank from Snowflower, who is sticking around in the area, but now has no flash. So it's going to be a little bit harder to make that one work out. Seeing the, the gank around the mid side, though, and the pressure No Man still has through mid lane, Ananasik is going to be able to start up the Rift Herald. And Supermassive, they don't know exactly what's going on, but I think they're just going to be able to trade this one out on the bot side. Actually, there may have been, I think that's a zombie ward, so it probably was spotted out initially with a sweeper. And that's why Supermassive are going down bot side for the break. Yeah, look at the Ocean Dragon pretty easily. There's no uh, no vision at all for Unicorns of Love on this bottom side of the map. So it's a Dragon for Rift Herald trade. We've talked about this so many times across the course of Worlds already. Really depends on how you use the Rift Herald. Who yeah. are you funneling the gold into? You need to get it down in, well, you have to get it down in the next three and a half minutes, but you should be able to do that pretty easily. You do also oh, have to low like Snowflower. Snowflower caught underneath the tower. Wasn't expecting Santos there. The heal is burnt. Ouch. Yeah, that's a, that's a big loss for them down bot side. Because I was just about to say, with the, them showing topple, Ananasik, he's up here. I mean, Armut still has that button. 
And so he doesn't really uh, doesn't really care about your ganks. Does have to use the ultimate, but it's ult for ult trade in the top lane. I keep adding an extra gnaw in there just because he's that crazy. I'm a banana, 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 a pine banana apple is what we call him there. Uh, but yeah, what I was what I was gonna say is that as soon as you get the announcement that Riffield goes down topside, Kakao obviously has that potential dive opportunity oh. down bot. Ananasik doing the same thing up topside, and everyone will be okay in the end. But remember that Zynot did lose his heal. I don't think it's the worst thing in the world because it doesn't feel like unicorns are trying to make a play desperately anytime soon, especially with double teleport advantage going towards the super massive solo laners. If anything, super massive with those deep wards in the bot lane you can see there on your minimap could be setting up for some sort of TP play, but until Armut's ultimate is up, they probably can't pull the trigger. Yeah, about half the cooldown left on that. 11 minutes into the game, it's a 200 gold difference between the two teams. Nothing substantial. Where is it coming from, though, Ender? Well, we can see in the bottom lane, Zeitnot has about a 20 CS lead. No man slightly ahead in the mid lane as well. That's about 20 now, so a little bit of extra gold being picked up for Supermassive. They also got the plate in the bottom lane, of course, which will contribute towards that. Now Santos and Ananasik, they're going for the path around towards mid side. Just looking to see if they can seal away any jungle camps. Again, this is what Nidalee is going to try to do a lot of when she's trying to take control over areas of the map. And vision around mid lane, especially for a flashless Zoli, is going to be absolutely pivotal. Snowfire going in with the quickness, he's put to sleep and knocked what? to the side. Here's the hero's entrance, Snowfire almost dies but gets away with the grand entrance. And now Ananasik is the target, the bullet time coming out. And first blood secured by Supermassive. And who better to pick it up than Zeitnot there as Gadget walks into the jungle with the stealth, but there's a lot of people here. The rat with just a vamp scepter is not going to want to tango with that anytime soon. Really nice move there from Supermassive, and honestly, Snowflower getting out with just a sliver there. That was kind of lucky. That's one of the difficulties playing into a Khan as Alistair, though, is like you can lock him, up, lock him up for about half a second to a second, and then he just jumps away to someone else on the back line. So. Even though it was Supermassive who looked for part of that engage, Unicorns of Love uh, weren't able to catch out the target they were looking for. But here comes Santa double from the TP. bottom lane. Whoa, that was incredibly quick double TP as they look for the fight. But Lulu does have Flash. He's going to chase onto Santos. Unstoppable onslaught flashed away here by Gadget, but he's going to be slowed up by the Seismic Shard. And the chase is on. The rat is caught in the trap. Supermassive get their second. Supermassive just have the answers into the Twitch, and we saw there, even with this flash up, he can't survive against the dive. This is how Supermassive drafted. They just went, we're going to jump hard on this Twitch. We're going to make it impossible for him to play the game. And now denying him even more. While well, Zynot was getting kills, now Gadget is dying. But hey, no man's down bot side, apparently. They're ready to pick up one in return. That's, uh, that feels more like an overstep from Zeitnot than anything else. Maybe Santa stayed in the, one of those bottom bushes yeah. and then caught him out. Of course, the Hex Flash on the Alistair can be pretty darn destructive. Meanwhile, topside, the, the Rift Herald was placed down, so Boss was able to fully clear away that turret while the teleport went down bot side, and it's going to get another charge up in the top lane. Armu, can he hit the eye? Oh, he's going to be able to stop it. And battle of uh, two pugilists there punching each other as the Rift Herald uh, loses out on the fight. I always wonder how much it would hurt to be hit by Malphite. I feel like quite a lot, but then I look at it, I mean, it doesn't do so much damage. I mean, it's kind of like a landslide, right? If you think about it, like, he's a giant mountain. That thing's absolutely terrifying. We'll see this play again, because it's a really slick flash from Zeitnot to pop on out of this one. Of course, Santos now without a flash, and Gadget tries to heal to escape from this one, but the bonus movement speed, flash into ult is dodged away from, but coming off of those TPs with the move speed ever since those changes, it is just really hard to run away from that. It's so difficult as the uh, Twitch here. Like, you have to use your ambush really effectively at the start of the fight. You have to be really far back when fights go uh, go on later on, because otherwise, Armut's Unstoppable Onslaught is on about half the cooldown of your flash, right? You're never going to be able to get out of there. He can always just catch you out with the Malphite. And the madness is that even building full tank is that Malphite, I don't think there will ever be a stage in the game in which Twitch can win the 1v1. No. Maybe when he has the flash up and can maybe... Only if the ult misses. Like yeah, that. and has like a Nidalee heal on top of him, something like that. They, he can potentially try to contest past like four items, but this Malphite is always going to be insanely strong and is going for a very early frozen heart too, so going to reduce the auto attack speed in that radius around him. That is just misery for a Twitch. Works well into the Wukong as well as he dives onto towards those back lines. He has been given most of the gold, has boss. You can see Unicorns, even though they're behind in kills, actually about a thousand gold ahead because of those five plates in the top lane. And that was donated over to boss and Ananasik. 
Cloud Drake has been started up. And Unicorns want to fight this, but again, no flash on Gadget. And Armut has ult. He wants to find the rat. The cow is going to look for the smite here. Nana is going to jump forward, steals it away. Snowflower going in with the quickness, can't quite get the damage down. And here's the cyclone onto the back line. Armut is the first target. Zynos going to try and position across the wall and opens up with the bullet time. Boss took a nap in the middle of it, but is still able to survive for the moment. Kakao chased off. He will get the kill on Boss. He will also fall. And meanwhile, the rest of the fight continues as Gadget has been untouched. Zyknot's going to try and do what he can into No Man's, but it's a great fight for the Unicorns. Five kills in the river. It was just a really good fight there from Unicorns. Gadget was under absolutely no threat. The Divers of Unicorns were one that soaked up the unstoppable force from Armut. Ananasek, he was able to get into the pit and steal away the Drake as well. So a very big swing there for Unicorns. The game was looking a little bit grim, but with that fight won, they're going to be able to get a lot. Yeah, Gadget now 3-1-1 one, and one with a bounty on his head. This Twitch is rich. And he We'll be going back to base, finish that Blade of the Ruin King pretty quickly. No Man's as well, picking up a few assists is going to be in a very strong spot. These next item spikes are going to be so impactful for the Unicorns because, of course, you get that little bit extra damage on your poke. You get, like, if yeah. you can get an extra item on a Nanasik as well, it's going to be so much harder for Supermassive to engage. So let's check out this fight one more time because, again, it's a steal at the start. And then on one side, you see Snowflower Diamond 40 doesn't connect it. But then the double sleep comes through and Zynod tries to line it up. But Santos, I wasn't quite sure how his sleep ended up being broken and the damage ult. used his ult. There you go. And then, the, of course, the. Ultimate wasn't quite enough damage to finish off the Wukong, so everything was spent on the front line. They were able to get out free, and all of a sudden, that means Gadget full HP can turn that one around for a triple. Yeah, a lot of people forget that Alistair Ult isn't just about being a massive Minotaur that is incredibly <laughs> tanky, but also breaks any CC on you at the time. So you wait for the sleep, you pop the ult, oh. take 65% damage reduction. Gadget jumped in here, but the spray and pray. Zynos just gonna die before he can even do anything. Snowflower was the one to engage, and now he's the one who is being collapsed on. Santos trying to give him a gift from the side of of the lane as Snowflower goes down. Double kill to Gadget. That rat is so strong. Well, Medic, I think the, the Twitch is going to be a problem yep. now with five kills there. That's two times in a row Snowflower tried to pick him off, but the grand entrance did not find the knockup. The CC was not there, and then he just opens up with so much damage. Look at this. 1,700 gold lead for No Man's in the mid lane. Gadget is 1,000 gold ahead of Zyknot. Like, for the four carries on Unicorns have more gold than anyone on Supermassive. Would you like some more crazy news? Because there's a I Rift Herald, it. too, on that Nidalee. I mean, what can you do? Has the Blade of the Rune King completed? That's a big spike right there with the ultimate cuts through Zytnot and the Teleport, too, to make sure they finish off the second. I'll say what you can do is hit the knockup as Rakar. Sure. Right, like, the last couple of fights, it's been Snowflower trying to get onto Gadget, not quite managing to do it. Now, in the, in the River fight, I can understand that he was miles away. But in that fight, why are you diving the if you can't guarantee that knockout. And now we're at a point for Supermassive where it was dead even, you know, maybe slightly behind in gold, but now Zynok gets jumped on again. Heroes Entrance coming out, Snowflower looking for the engage once again, and No Man's has been charmed up. The Zoe goes golden. You have to feel that stopwatch isn't going to save his life for long. Shutdown goes over to Zynok. Santa's now forced away as well. He's going to go to sleep, but Gadget opens up with a spray and pray. And he's just forcing Supermassive away. Up in the top side, Boss is going to be pushing for this turret, and he's going to get the whole thing, though. So while the kill does go to Supermassive, and that was a good fight for them, even more gold being picked up by Unicorns. The game has exploded into action, and uh, 18 minutes in, we have 13 kills, <laughs> and you set it in pick ban. Unicorns, it's quantity of fights. They will continue to take fight after fight after fight, and it's working for them. 5,000 gold ahead now. It, it has worked for them. The last fight didn't go their way, yeah. though, and I think there's a key difference in that that time, Supermassive, everything was lined up, you know, playing a little bit better together, because again, their ultimates are so crucial. They always want to fight off of their ultimate cooldowns. Unicorns, not necessarily as tied to those abilities with a couple of poke champions. So Supermassive, they want those condensed 5v5 team fights where they can line every Thing up, whereas Unicorns would much rather split things apart. So if Supermassive is the one dictating the fight, starting the fight, it will usually look good for them. The problem now is they're down 4,000 gold, and this Twitch has two items. Still hope for Supermassive, but they will have to start finding fights on their own terms. Things that help that, Dragons, of course, because you can fight in choke points, you can fight over a controlled area of the map. The Baron will be up in 40 seconds. Don't expect anyone to take it yet but it does give you a little bit more control over how you're fighting. You're not just getting caught out by Gadget as he ambushes into the lane. 
Don't forget Gadget, the guy who plays all the wacky picks in the bottom. He can still play the 80 carries, and they look real good as well. This is not an easy game to play the Twitch against all the dive that's going to be thrown his way, but leading into this Infernal Drake, he has his flash. Having that ability up means you get a freebie on the Malphite ult or the Rakan diving into the backline. If you can disengage that at the start and then make use of your range bat battling down at all the melee champions on Supermassive, you're going to be really hard to deal with. I think if you're Supermassive here, though, you give this one up. You don't need to fight over it. You're not at two items yet on your Galio, you're not... Well, 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 oh, then. You don't. You're gonna go for the teleport behind. Balulu looking for a flank position. The dragon's already gone. Balulu trying to catch out Gadget. Has the taunt not flashed away from, but here comes the Cyclone onto the backline, and Zynot's already almost dead. Snowflower uses the quickness to stop Whoa. on the unstoppable onslaught. Has popped, but that's on the tanky front line. Only Boss has fallen. Gadget killed off one, as uh, also Santos goes down right at the end of the fight. Gadget's still on the chase here, looking for Kakao, does have the spray and Bray won't find him. Yeah, Balulu is just, you know, causing being a decoy on the back line, saying, Gadget, take me, while the rest of the team lines up the CC for the two-kill turn. I will say Unicorn's getting the Drake, still going to be ideal for them. They also plop the Herald down the bot side for some extra damage on that turret, and also stealing away the entire jungle from Supermassive. It is a big win for Unicorns, even though they traded down in kills. That Herald feels a little bit like a, uh, this was about to time out, so we're just going to yeah. chuck it down in this lane. No minions there, nothing else. Maybe they have to answer it. Supermassive will go. Snowflower clears it out. Gadget, No Man's, and Ananasek now in the middle lane as they look to try and take down this tier one. Of course, removing the mid tier one helps so much when you're playing a poke comp. It gives you many more avenues to try and get in. You can come in from the bottom side jungle, from the top side jungle, and just try and put that extra pressure down, but yet to take it. Let's look at where we are in terms of this team fight is uh, Santos yeah. and Bosco straight in. I mean, it looks like a really good combo at the start, but the healing goes through onto Zynot, and then they turn it around. The two-man knock-up into the bullet time cuts through very nicely. I think Lilia burns him down with the passive there, combined with the Leon Bree's torment. So a good area of the fight there. And again, you see the theory of lining everything up. It's a very classic combo, not necessarily with the Lilia, but lining up a lot of AoE spells to knock down a bunch of people. But they need to be a little bit more coordinated with Balulu, I feel like, if they want to take a full 5v5. I mean, I wonder if there's an argument you just say, hey, Balulu, taunt the Twitch. We'll kill two people in the time it takes you to die. I, I think if Twitch is that far away from the rest of the fight, like that fight, he was miles yeah. away. Like, he was never, after getting that kill onto Balulu, he was never going to be able to rejoin the fight. Uh, but in a fight where it's a little bit closer together, that's where I don't think that strategy is going to work out as well. Because it's basically like putting him in a Mordekaiser ultimate. It's like, yeah. you take the 1v1, delete him, then pop out, and you're ready to kill the rest of the enemy team. I get that. I get that. Gadget was able to hold on to both of his summoners as well in that last fight. So still got his flash, still got his heal in case a fight erupts in the next couple of minutes. But my expectation is we'll be waiting for the Infernal. Two minutes on that as uh, Gadget ambushes into the top lane, but isn't going to be able to find his mark. Six, one, and one now on that Twitch. And as you said, like, he's a player known for his more unique picks, his Orianis, his Heimerdingers, you know, these special things that he can bring out. But I'm very impressed so far by him on this Twitch in this game against Supermassive. Unicorns now just trying to steal away the red buff, and they're not going to be successful. Zynot will finish it off, but keep your eyes on Armu. He's just passed out of bot lane in towards mid. Supermassive are looking for the fight. No flower going in, dances out. There's the TP. That's what they wanted. Their new boss was in the bottom lane, trying to get that wave pushing up. The wave will slowly move up towards the Supermassive bot lane tier 2, so at some point, Supermassive will have to answer it. And that TP gained off of the pressure provided by Armut. The Drowsy does connect in the back line of Snowflower, but he will dodge out of that one. Uh, Armut, we have to look at him, because he's been the carry in a lot of other games. On the Malphite, he's not the carry in terms of damage, but he is the guy that has to find Gadget. The Balulu will drop his ultimate on top of that everyone is going to use to pile up on that back line. So using the pressure, he gains in the side lane to walk up like that. He got the TP. That's a great first step. The next time, can it be a fight? Can it be a flash? Can it be a kill onto Unicorn's AD carry? That is what Supermassive will be hoping for. Their backs are a little bit against the ropes in this game. 5,000 gold behind as Supermassive, once again, Snowflower just dancing forward. The sleep has landed. X Flash from Santa's gonna dive in with the Cyclone. Zeitnod is already done for. And Armut tried to get in onto the Twitch, but he was flashed away from. Boss will take the kill. Two quick ones for the Unicorns and they turn their eyes over to the Baron. Unicorns, they saw Supermassive going for the flank. They said, screw it, we're just going to jump onto Zynot and get that kill. The AD carry goes down immediately, and this Baron is looking real good for Unicorns. Yeah, Kakao isn't even passing over to that side of the map. He's going bot lane. The Unicorns of Love will get the Baron. 24 minutes in, a 7,000 gold lead. And it only seems to be growing for our CIS representatives. 
Perhaps this is their year. Last year it was Spice that knocked them out. Before that, we saw Vega Squadron lose to Fungu Buffalo in MSI knockout 3 2. Maybe this is the chance for the Unicorns. Wow, the sleep connecting there. No man's getting that on to Zygon. Of course, Armut without the follow up of that Misfortune Ultimate, the damage is going to be lacking on this super massive team. You have to get everything working well together, otherwise, you're not going to be able to finish off those key targets. Now, back onto the map, Unicorns of Love. They're coming down for the Infernal Drake, but again, super massive are looking to fight them. Gadget lost his flash in the last fight. It's once again trying to pile up on this Twitch, and this time it's going to be that much easier, but there is a stopwatch in the inventory. The Lulu has flash, Armut has flash. They both got their ultimates as well. Well, all we're looking for is that wombo combo. You want the lilting lullaby into the unstoppable force, into the bullet time, into the hero's entrance. Like you have so many tools at your disposal. Snowflower slept up towards the top of it as Super massive, maybe looking for the Blast Cone play here. Snowflower forced away, there's a hero's entrance. Armut's jumping onto Gadget, he pops the stopwatch. You mentioned it ended, it's gonna keep him alive for the moment, but the knockup's still coming down. Kick out, flashing forward, the shutdown goes over to Zeitnot. But now the fight turns on his head as the Unicorns of Love are the ones advancing, stepping forward into the jungle of Super Massive. They get a kill and they will go back for the Dragon. Yeah, Unicorn's gonna be able to get that Drake. Gadget sacrificed his life, but he did his job. He stayed alive for long enough for the rest of his team to pick up two kills on the opposite end right there. And that'll take Unicorn's to soul point here for that Infernal. And their comp built around Poke, it's perfect. Kakao steps in front of the panel, so I think Zainal might have just died to that. The Loating Lullaby coming out, and here's the Teleport. They don't want to wake up No Man's yet. They want him in bedtime land, as Santos is the one to step forward. Anana Sig tries to dive onto Kakao. Zainal now the target, and he is left for dead by the rest of his team. Oh. Armut eats a spear to his rear, and he will go down as well. The Unicorns of Love have a minute left on this bound. You know, I thought the push from Unicorns was done after they got the Drake, but they took the fight there. It looked good for Supermaster for just a second. I mean, just a second, because Unicorns turned it immediately around, and now they're going to have the inhibitor. At 15 minutes, this gold lead was 1,500. At 26 minutes, it is a 10,000 gold lead for the Unicorns of Love, and this is what they did in the CIS. They got leads, they got mechanical advantages, and then they just snowballed the game away from their opponents. It's exactly what they're doing to Supermassive right now. And it didn't even matter that Zeitnot got the first kill, that Gadget fell down early into the lane. They were able to turn around a lot of these fights, triple kill, double kill, turning it into their advantage. Now they're looking at the second inhibitor and Supermassive. When will they call the final fight? When will they draw the line in the sand? We saw exactly what the Supermassive composition wanted to do. It just a couple of fights. Looking back at when Gadget was able to pick up those three kills, really took this game out of their hands. And there'd be mo moments of brilliance, there'd be flashes in the pan. But Supermassive have yet to be able to really get a grasp on this game. Of course, we have at least two more. So they have at least two more chances to get things back on track. I do think it is important to remind people that like the early game did look pretty solid for Supermassive. Yep. They got the kills onto Zeitnot that they needed to. They just weren't able to convert that. They took uh, a sloppy fight around the Dragon where Unicorns were able to split it up. It wasn't the full five-man front to back that Supermassive were looking for. And that's the scrappy style of games that the Unicorns of Love love to play. You know, they want to make use of their strong soul laners. They're, they're balling too to take these scrappy 2v3, 2 v or 3v3 fights all up in your face. And now with two inhibitors down, they're just looking to dot their I's and cross their T's and go up to the top lane for the third and final inhibitor. And you can see Unicorn set up their vision control. Something they're good at when they're in the lead is just gaining control of the enemy jungle. Santa's jumping in onto Armut, trying to chunk out the Malphite before the fight can really begin. Belulu on his way, Armut now. He does have the unstoppable force. On, uh, Gadget does not have his flash. He's got about 15 seconds on that. No man stepping forward. Here's Here the Gadget. They dive onto Gadget. The hero's entrance coming out as well. He's asleep. asleep. Armut is asleep. He took a nap on the job and it may cost super massive at this fight. Belulu dived onto the back line and was able to kill off Gadget. And now it's up to Zeitnot and Armut to try and step forward. Santos goes down. 2v2, 2v3, uh, sorry, in favor of Unicorns as Zeitnot fell. Kakao and Armut. Got to try and defend, Whoa. no man's flashing in. They've got supers, they've got supers pushing in. Yeah, and, uh, they're looking to play off of those bot lane minions and in the mid lane too here. Boss, he teleports back after getting a reset, so he's full HP, full mana, no ultimate left on him, but Unicorns, they want to end the game right here. Kakao are looking to try and get some damage down, clear out the minions, but you just can't do it quickly enough. Armut jumped on, Kakao sweeps away a few, but the Nexus Tower is the target for the Unicorns. 
and it looks like Super Massive may have met their match in game one here. Armored down to about a third HP. The Nexus still ticking away, but here comes Zeitnot back alive. Going to be able to defend that win for the moment. The bullet time oh, coming no. out, cancelled immediately by Zeitnot. And uh, that means the Unicorns will be able to get away. Disaster. Zeitnot saw the sleep coming in, but he'd already cast his ultimate, so he instantly had to cancel that one coming through. Can't say that it looks good for Supermassive stuck here in their base, down 10,000 gold without a tower remaining. But look at this. The sleep from No Man's onto Armut completely stops the engage. Snowflower gets over the sleep, but without the mouth bite to come on in, the damage is delayed. Armut, they try to peel back on this right side of the team fight, but no Man's and Ananasik, they were able to turn it around after Gadget did finally go down with a three-player advantage. They were able to push into the base for just barely, just almost yeah. the win. You can see Balulu was still able to kill Gadget at the end, but uh, just wasn't quite enough. Snowflower was millimeters away from eating that yeah. sleep. Like, that probably would have just changed the entire complexion of the game, because the Rakan doesn't care if he's asleep as long as he's on the Twitch, right? Yeah, like, you, you would have gotten the CC, right? Exactly. And then Malphite could follow up with the Galio, maybe it could be a little bit different here, but now second Baron of the game will be taken by the Unicorns, and I don't think Supermassive can get over here. Yeah, Balulu does have teleport, so he's going to try and catch that bot wave, but the Unicorns are just able to take this pretty much for free after those Super Minions put up a charge in the middle and the bottom lane. Inhibitor didn't fall in the top lane, Ender. That's important for us to note. The Unicorns went for the win instead of making sure that they crossed their T's and dotted their I's and took down all of those structures. Speaking of, there's uh, Infernal Soul on the map if they wanted to go for it, but Unicorn's feeling very confident. Putting five people into the top side of the map, Sans is going to pop in with the Blast Cone, and they could just sprint for the Nexus here. Gadget is stealthed up. Gadget has Flash, has Heal, has the Spray and Prey. There's the Inhibitor down. Santas dives forward onto Zytnot's Charm comes out. There's a Hero's Entrance as well, but Gadget is totally untouched in this fight, and Boss is still on the front line. Bullet time coming out, Santos is going to knock Zynot back into the fight. Armor tried to do what he can, but the shutdown comes down for Kakao. Boss is down, but super massive are just getting swept away by Gadget. Armor falls a double for Anana Sick, and super massive retreats to the safety of the fountain as Unicorns take game one. Unicorns looking good right there. They took a couple of critical team fights around the Drake, split them up exactly like they needed to, and Gadget on that Twitch completely took over that match to carry that win. Just a few fights that really defined the game. It's kind of the story that we had yesterday with Supermassive Games as well. Against Mad yeah. Lions, it was one or two fights in the mid game that really took the match either in Supermassive's favor or out of Supermassive. Yeah, because I mean, looking at these two comps, I still really like what Supermassive had to offer. Yeah. It really was that first big team fight around the uh, the Drake down there in the bot side of the map that ended up costing them so much. Where Twitch got that triple kill and Gadget, once you give him an edge, he will not let go. I think you can say that about the entirety of the Unicorns of Love. Like the amount of aggressive invades, Santa's hex flashing underneath turrets to make sure they could get onto Zeitnot. Like it was actually really impressive to watch how good they are at snowballing the game away from their opponents. And we've got game two coming shortly, but as we go to a break, let's take a look at the comms from Mad Lions versus Supermassive. Okay, they're, ca they're getting yeah, candle, they they're getting candle, they're, they're throwing. Like, you can poke them, Notos does yeah. have flash, he does have flash, they're gonna flip it, they're gonna flip it. I have all them too, I have all them I'm coming soon, I'm coming soon. Look at the graves, look at the graves, look at the graves. I got it, I got it, I I'm coming soon, I'm coming soon. You can run, 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 Unique, with astonishing power, unstoppable, master warriors, ready to compete, seeking glory. We live it, we breathe it, we have each other's back. Together, we become legends, icons of a new generation.